Hi guys and welcome, Fnambon here. In this video we will be looking at a bunch of old and new ways you can control game speed with the carpet mod. But also we have something really cool to show at the end and you probably know what to expect from the title. It's a super hot mode for Minecraft. But before we get to that, a short refresher of all the other tick control and diagnostic options with a bunch of new stuff that I haven't shown yet. All of these features, the same as the entire carpet mod, are introduced with hardcore vanilla players in mind, giving them more creative power over the game while keeping all the vanilla rules and vanilla feel, yet allowing to have more control over the core game mechanics. However, as you will see also from the super hot mode, it can be a lot of fun as well. So, the game runs on so-called ticks. If we look at the client after the debug screen, it displays the current FPS or how fast the game renders all the objects on the screen. Internally though, the game runs on only 20 so-called ticks, which means that all the important processes are recomputed at most 20 times a second, for once every 15 milliseconds. In normal vanilla game there is nothing we can do about it, so if we have for example a farm that we would like to assess the output of, it means that we will need to spend a lot of time at the computer to get some statistically meaningful results. Or on the contrary, if our fast-paced contraption doesn't behave like we want to, it's hard sometimes to act quickly enough to observe really what's going on and where the problem lies. The first and the oldest capability of the carpet mod is to control the tick rate to deviate it from the traditional 20 times per second, or 15 milliseconds per tick. Command slash tick rate does exactly that. And you can both speed up the game by setting a higher tick rate, for example to get the results of effectiveness of our farms quicker, or we can set it to a lower tick rate, which should hopefully allow us to observe better some aspects of fast-paced contraptions. There are certain limitations to it. First of all, since you are slowing the game mechanics port only, and due to the fact that carpet mode affects only the server side of the game, Players can move and act seemingly normally, which is great, but this means that some animations are not displayed properly, like business animations or TNT animations. That's all fine and nothing to worry about. It has no effect on the game itself, it's just a visual artifact. Second issue is the fact that since all the server-side communication is slowed down as well, if we set the TPS to a very, very small number, server might take a very long time to respond to things like commands and we might be rubber banding like crazy as well. Second and one of the most appreciated by the community functions of the carpet mod is the ability to warp through time, which in this case means running the game as fast as it can for a preset number of ticks. And we can do it using the tick warp command. Since you start warping the time, we shouldn't interfere with the current warp. This is to protect anybody that may have started a timed experiment in the past and maybe it's not the best idea to mess up with it. However, we can stop an existing warp, typing tick warp 0. Another useful option is the ability to attach a command to the end of a tick warp command to be executed at the end of the warp. This way we can, for example, make looped experiments when we repeat a certain set of commands and use the tick warp tail command to create a loop for us. When the warp is completed, game will tell you how fast it was running during this time. This can be used to assess how much game resources a given contraption is using. It displays it in ticks per second, a usual reason to brag how game-friendly your contraption is for the game or how fast your computer is running, but arguably it is much more reasonable to look at the other number, the number of milliseconds each average tick has taken. If it's below 50, this means that the game should be able to run at 20 ticks per second, no problem. The good thing about this metric is the fact that unlike TPSs, MSPTs are additive which means that we can better assess what is the capacity of our computer in terms of handling multiple contraptions of the same type. I'll explain shortly what does additive means on the another example. If we need a more thorough insight of what takes time in the world, you can use a brand new tick health command, which doesn't speed up the game by itself, yet still tells us how much time each tick took and brings a small breakdown of what and where took the most time. You can obviously combine tick warp with the health command if you'd want to run it as fast as we want. It works on a similar premise as a built-in profiler, just with much simpler interface and much more condensed info, so this one, unlike the built-in profiler, should have absolutely no impact on the world it's measuring, and also gives you a breakdown across all dimensions, which is really useful. I'm only including here information about some obvious CPU hoggers, and there will be always some other aspects of the game that are not included, and these go to the rest category. 
If you happen to check this feature out and find out that the last component, the rest stuff, corresponds to a large portion of your CPU usage, and if you can figure out what this might be, please let me know and I could try to separate this section and give its own label. But for the most cases, I think that should be all the information you would need to know what lags your game. So let me show you on a small example. Before we start any timing experiments, it's a good practice to measure the background noise in the world to keep track on how much resources this world is using on its own. Which is almost nothing in this case, because it's a flat world and I disabled mob spawning with the game room. So now we can check, for example, how much CPU resources this setup consumes. And now we can test with tick health, and it takes about 5 milliseconds per tick, so about 10% of the total game resources. And you can get similar results via running the tick warp command as well. So if we run two of them, this should give us about 10 milliseconds per tick. And indeed it does. And if we run the third one, we should get about 15 milliseconds per tick, give or take one, because there is always some randomness involved. So this concludes that measuring performance using milliseconds per tick or MSPTs is additive, meaning that we can estimate what would be the capacity of the game given a particular hardware to run multiple of these contraptions at the same time. So in this case, we should be able to run 20 of them and to use about 100% of server resources on this particular server machine. However, to be able to add stuff together, we have to make sure that it's properly isolated from other contraptions. For instance, with many mobs in the same spot, we will be taking comparatively more and more of the game resources. If we spawn 100 chickens here, our CPU usage is raised to about 2 milliseconds, so about 4% of the available resources. So if chickens were additive, if we spawn about 500 of them, the CPU would go to about 10 to 12 milliseconds maybe. And it turns out it's now 25 milliseconds, which actually means that adding more chickens to the pile costs more than just these chickens. And it is in the game tend to have quadratic performance costs. So in this case we have 500 of them, so 5 times 5 is 25. So with 700 chickens, 7 times 7 is 49, so almost 50, we should exhaust all the game resources. So let's spawn 200 more. And indeed, that's what happens. If you were to add a significantly more chickens to this pit, it would be very easy to crash the server at this point. Quick note about the tick warp and the tick health commands. We are here in my survival world, that's definitely need some debugging at this point, so it's a good place to demonstrate my point here. It turns out it's typically faster to warp stuff than play at normal 15 milliseconds per tick. We can see if I warp my spawn chunks where I'm standing, it will be typically getting 6-7 milliseconds per tick. And if I run the warp normally, I'll be seeing about 10 milliseconds per tick. Interesting difference. So I did actually spend some time trying to figure out why this happens and why while warping you are getting better server performance and I found that this difference comes from all sorts of network and OS related events that the game deals with on a real time basis, not based on the in-game timing. Meaning, if you run the game takes much faster, the game will take comparatively less time from the tech perspective to deal with all these additional issues, like network and the OS. To prove it, I can run the game in normal mode, so no warping, just speed up this clock and here we are changing the tick weight time constant from 50 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds, in this case with 100 ticks per second, which is uh, just a cosmetic change, and our TPS is now reported again as 6 to 7. So let's bring down the game to the defaults and show the last debugging tool, which is tick entities. In some cases running tick health might not give us all the information which we need, especially if we don't know exactly what ticks or ticks resources in the world. So for that we can use tick entities. This one, while we're running it, on the contrary, has some impact on the server performance, so it will run the world a little bit slower, but it will report to us what are the major lag causes in the world, spread across regular entities and tile entities. In this case, we can see that hoppers in the nether and the overworld seem to be the main culprits. In the nether, we have a hopper duplication farm, which contains 768 hoppers, which will not work anyways anymore in 1.12.2, so this can be dismantled. And here in the overworld, we have a bunch of storage systems of all sorts, so we might need to move them somewhere else. And also have a few simple iron farms, which having them at spawn might be an issue as well, as we can see on the performance. The 300 something entities that are in the nether is the mob switch, and as we can see it's not that big of an issue as we can see as they are in lazy chunks, so they don't add to the overall CPU time. 
So while speeding up the game with tick warp and tick rate commands is a very useful and practical thing, slowing the game down is not that useful because in most cases setting a tick rate to a very small number is not slow enough and makes the game very unresponsive. That's why I implemented the tick freeze command. We use this as a toggle and with this one we can pause and resume the game at any point we want. Freezing applies to all the entities, blocks and all the block events. It freezes the world timers, but not the game timer, day cycles, chunk loading nor player actions. So players can move freely, interact with the world as they please, everything else is just frozen. This has proved extremely useful for me in debugging the timings on larger contraptions where it was not really easy to monitor what happened in different parts of a contraption at the same time. While frozen, players can release the game for a set amount of ticks using tick step command indicating how many ticks we want the game to run for. This way we can take as much time as we want to investigate what is happening in a contraption. Tick freeze is independent from tick warps and tick rates, so you can use all of them at once if you need to. This brings us to the last and final addition to the mod, the super hot mode. It spawned naturally from the tick freeze command, but it's not that practical yet definitely it's a great fun. Super Hot is a game, which is a first-person shooter, where the world moves only when you move. So it's like first-person shooter meets chess, where you have tons of time to plan and rethink your next steps. I thought this is an awesome game concept, and since I don't typically play games, Minecraft is not a game, it's more like a lifestyle, I thought it's gonna be easier just to make it for Minecraft, rather than have to play the game itself. Since I already had a freeze option, I thought it's not going to be complicated to add the super hot mode, and it wasn't. And honestly, when I first put it together, when I was testing it, I ended up running a couple of hours in a flat world in survival with some basic weapon chasing all the naturally spawned hostiles. It was so much fun. I'm not a map maker, but if you are one, or you know somebody who does maps, or know some really tough and hostile maps, that might be a great option to come up with something to be played with this new game mode. In super hot, if you think about it from the mob's perspective, you are like a ninja, because you don't really wait for your actions. And I found that any number of melee units like zombies shouldn't be an issue as long as you keep track of all of them, because uh, you can really time your shots and you can attack as many mobs as you want, just remember that when they are damaged they will not take any damage for the next 10 ticks, and that's 10 ticks in their own world. But if you throw in a bunch of skeletons to the mix, it actually gets really challenging. It's especially because if they manage to knock you back, somehow you are technically start flying in the air, which counts as a movement, so you will be owned quickly and can stop the game at this point. Most of this also I found this really teaches you different approaches to, to creepers. In normal Minecraft, when you hear the hiss, you just want to run away. In this case, you just want to freeze, look around, assess the situation, and then basically figure out what you want to do and then take your actions and run away. Sometimes some entities may behave a little bit weird, like arrows, a TNT, or items thrown, as some of their movement and animations is partially come to the client side. But for the most cases, I would say it looks good enough without the need of modifying the client itself. One issue though, the super hot and freeze options also affect the common blocks the same way it affects all the redstone. So the potential logic that you have with your farm or with your contraption or with your map will run at mob speed, not the player speed. We can toggle between the modes using tick super hot, but we can also set it and reset it with a tick super hot start and stop, which might be more useful in the command block applications. At the end, a little personal note, you may notice that I haven't uploaded for quite some time, as just again I fall into some crazy busy time of the year, work, family stuff, and I had to go back to school for a few months, so I don't have pretty much any time to do anything else, even at the cost of sleep because school stuff takes most of my nights as well. And on top of that, I lost my voice recently to laryngitis for like two weeks already. As you can see, it's getting better, but it's not fun. However, exciting stuff is definitely coming to the channel. I got back into survival with a vengeance, but it might take a couple of weeks in between each video. Previously, I tried to upload every two, three weeks. Now it's a little bit stretching it for a little bit longer, for a couple of months, but we'll see. Once the crazy time stops being that crazy, I should be able to go back to the previous update schedule, so a video every now and then. <laughs> so peeps, the patch for 1.12 vanilla Minecraft server with the most recent carpet mod, including the newly fleshed out tick command, and a completely revamped slash carpet command, which replaces the good old but very much temporary temporal command, is in the description, along with the instructions how to install the mod. 
If you enjoyed the video and the concept, especially the super hot mode, don't forget to leave me a like and leave me a comment in the comment section below. And if you are a map maker and want to try this concept or know some really hard maps that might be interesting to play in the super hot mode, feel free to let me know, contact me over Twitter for example or in the comment section. I think this new game mode has really huge potential to bring something new, something interesting, new challenges to the gameplay. Anyways, thanks guys for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye!